All right, so this video is going to give an introduction to the basic graphs of the functions sine and cosine. All right, so first off, let's look at sine. All right, so f of x equals sine x. Now, when you don't know how to graph something, everybody remember, you just kind of go off the side and you make a little t-chart. So this is x and this is f of x. And then we're going to plug in numbers for x and let it spit back numbers for, for y, the f of x there. The difference, though, this time is we're going to choose... Um, radians. We're going to plug in radians. Okay. So using your unit circle, um, we're just going to kind of go around the unit circle and choose a few points there and get an idea of you know wh what's happening here, right? Okay. So start with zero. If you take zero radians, what's the sine of zero? Well, it's also zero. And if you say like take the sine of pi over four, for example, what's the sine of pi over four? Well, that's the square root of two over two, right? And it's like 0.707, something like that. And then let's just, I'm kind of leading you. Let's just go ahead and take pi over 2. What's the sine of pi over 2? Well, that's 1. Right? And then 3 pi over 4. Right? Well, that's also the square root of 2 over 2. And then you get to pi, you're down here. What, what's the sine of pi? Right? That's right, you're back at 0. Right? And just kind of continue that pattern. You know, just use your, your unit circle and get the values. So we can go over here and sketch the graph of our of our function. Now remember, all the way around the circle is 2 pi radians, right? So we're going to go out of 2 pi. And really what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this in half. And say, all right, that's pi. And I'm going to cut this area right here in half. Say, all right, well, that's pi over 2. And then cut this area right here over in half, which is 3 pi over 2. Right? Just, just because of space, I'm not going to put in pi over 4 and pi over 6 and pi over 3. Um, and we don't, it turns out we don't really need those just to get the basic sketch real quick, right? All right, so what's the largest value that we have for our sign, or the largest y value over here? Well, it turns out to be 1. Okay? And the lowest turns out to be negative 1 when you continue around your circle there. All right. So sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, which is like 0.7. So it's somewhere up here, let's say. Okay. And then pi over 2, though, is up here at 1. So we're just going to go to the ones that we can get an exact value for real quick. All right? And then the sine of pi was 0, where the 3 pi over 4, which would be halfway inside here, would be 0.7 again. Right, and then 3 pi over 2, what's the sine of 3 pi over 2? Well, that's negative 1. And then the sine of 2 pi is back to 0. And then it kind of starts all over again, right? Because you can keep going around and around and around the circle. Right, and so when you sketch the graph, you're just connecting these dots in a nice smooth curve. It's, there are no straight lines or anything like that. No sharp corners. Okay. And the difference is, is that it just keeps going. Right, because you can go out past two pi, and we can go out negative, because like this would be negative pi over two, and then you'd be down at negative one, right, and then up to negative pi, right, and it would go through be zero negative pi, and just kind of continue, right, and it continues this pattern um, indefinitely, right, in both directions. But really what we're saying is that if we, if we quote unquote start at zero, then it doesn't start over again until you get to two pi. That's called the period of the function, right? Once, uh, once the, the y values start to repeat themselves again. All right, so the period here is what's called two pi. And you can think of that as well, that's one revolution around the circle, right? And if you keep going around the circle again, your radians change, but the y values for the sign there, they stay, they're gonna be the same, right? So that's why you've got this up and down curve. It has a fancy name called a sinusoidal wave, um, or just in short, we're gonna call it a sine wave, right? And you've heard sine waves, I'm sure, um, in other classes or on science programs or whatever. So sine wave is what we have. Now, the maximum value for the basic function y equals sine x is 1, although that occurs an infinite number of times. Okay? And the minimum y value, or the minimum function value, is um, negative 1, which again occurs an infinite number of times. Right? The domain 
would be all real numbers and the range well maybe we'll write that out the domain would be all real numbers while the range is between negative one and one all right it's continuous over the whole domain there right and also this is symmetric everybody see that it's symmetric with respect to the to the origin. Remember, the idea of being sim, uh, symmetrical with respect to the origin means if you took opposite x values, it gave you opposite y values. Everybody see that? Pi over 2 gives you 1. Negative pi over 2 gives you negative 1. Opposite x values give you opposite um, y values. So sy symmetry with respect to the origin, which also means that we have an odd function. And that's because f of negative x equals the opposite of f of x. If you take opposite x values, you get opposite y values. Remember, that was the definition for an odd function back in your algebra days. Okay, uh, And odd functions are um, have symmetry with respect to the origin. All right, so that's the basic graph for, for um, sine x. In the next video, we'll be moving them up, down, right, left. We'll be changing the period, actually, making it bigger and, um, you know, instead of, having a maximum at 1 uh, and a minimum at negative 1. We're going to make those change. We'll talk about all those things in the next video. All right, so the other function I want to do today is the cosine function. And very similar to the sine function, where you go out here to 2 pi. I'll leave the t-chart thing for you guys to do. And when you do that, well, what's the cosine of 0? Well, the cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 would be zero. The cosine of pi is negative one. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. And the cosine of two pi is one. And then it starts to repeat over and over again. Right? So when you connect the dots this time, it looks something like this. And again, it's going to repeat. Right? So it's going to go through. Right here is negative pi over two. Right? Again, cosine has period 2 pi, right? Starts at 0, so to speak, and it starts over again when you get to 2 pi, right? So one period is 2 pi units long. All right, so the domain for cosine would be, again, all real numbers, just like for sine. And the range, just like for sine, is negative 1 to 1. And this time we have an even function. Everybody remember what that meant? All right, even function. That meant that if you take opposite x values, you get the same y value back. All right? So negative pi and pi, opposite x values, give you the same y value. All right? So even function. And even functions have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. If you fold the graph along the y-axis here, the left side falls on top of the right side. That was symmetry with respect to the to the y-axis. Okay, so this even and odd thing that I'm mentioning, it'll come into play later. So right now I'm just kind of um, introducing to you and, re and refreshing your memory of what even functions and odd functions mean. And you just need to know that cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function. All right, so the only other thing to mention on the cosine graph is it's not called a cosinusoidal. That's not the case. No, it's still called a sine wave. Even though it's the cosine graph, the graph of cosine, it's still called it. They're all called sine waves. And that's really because that's because the graph of cosine is just the graph of sine shifted to the right or to the left, pi over two units. All right, so that's it. Nothing fancy. They're all called sine waves, and um, those are the basic graphs. You are to know the basic graphs of cosine and sine. You're to know the basic graphs of sine and cosine off the top of your head. Okay, that will help make everything else uh, go a little bit smoother. All right, so that's it. Make sure you see the next video where we um, are going to change these basic graphs, I'll do some translations to them, and talk about different terminology. So make sure you check that one out. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.